So something uh, back to the more traditional today, Rob. Tell everybody where you are. Southfield. Now Southfield, classic Bream and Skimmer venue. It's fishing brilliantly at the minute as well, Lee. What a perfect day for bream fishing. Very nice day Beautiful for bream fishing. Wind. Beautiful and warm, nice yeah. and windy. Not a big fish this one, mate, but saying a classic Southfield. Oh, nice fish. Classic Southfield. Southfield fish. It's a little bit clearer than Southfield's been in recent times, Rob. I feel. Do you know what I mean? I can see, I can see like 18 inches down, which is quite interesting. But you've been having a nice, uh, you've been having a nice session today. You've obviously got some big matches coming up here, and we've been out with the, the group coaching guys today, who are all just getting set up. And this is bream number three already. Nice fishing. Yeah. Yeah. Show the guys at home uh, a little bit of uh, what you've been doing today because show, it's show working really I think well. The, the bait's the important side, isn't it? But we'll show, show them this view. Now, that is a classic Southfield fish. Now, that, what is it, a pound and a half, yeah, maybe? Pound and a half. Pound and a half. That's a skimmer, isn't it? Yeah, it's a skimmer, what yeah. What do you think a skimmer is up north compared to that side? Because if I go through meadows, <laughs> a four pounder is a skimmer. <laughs> but up here, what are we saying? Two pounder is a bream? Yeah, once it goes over two pound, I think people are happy to call it a bream. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I always think when they just start going brown, that's my rules. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Yeah, yeah. brown is bream. Yeah, pound is bream, and a, a silver fish is a skimmer. I'm just going to get me little bait because I want to go with oh. what we've used. So. Brown bait mix today. Put these in the carrier so they didn't get blown away. We've mixed up a bag of Swim Slim Green. We all know about Swim Slim Green. Obviously, it's been used for years. Fantastic for brown bait for green. But you'll notice, Lee, the yep. water's not really that coloured, is it? No, it's clearer than normal. So one. I just want to take the edge off it. That's where the old amino bite comes into play. And you can see there that. The ground bait yeah, it's is darker gonna, than normal. A yeah. nice dark shade of green. We know that um, bream and skimmers love a green ground bait, but I just don't want something that's glowing like a beacon on the bottom. So that's why we've gone for that. You can see there as well, Lee, come in there. Look how fine. That's a, that's a really heavy, damp consistency there, but we've put it through a riddle and it's really nice and fine. Right, consistencies. This is the important thing that we've been talking about today to the guys on the bank. We're altering this ground bait throughout the day. It's making a, a massive difference to how we're catching a fish. So we've got a tub of water on our side tray. The wind's getting up big time, so this is going to be a fantastic day's fishing. A tub of water on our side tray. And what I can do with that is I can just drip a bit of water in my bowl and I can create different consistencies of ground bait. So if I want something that's a little bit sloppier, I'll just create a little well in the middle of my ground bait bowl and create a nice sloppy mix. And when would you want that, Rob? When would you want a sloppy mix? You know, if I felt like I needed to attract some fish. Yeah. So if I need to attract some fish, maybe from a distance. Flip me some in the edge. I'm going to flip some in the edge. So if I wanted to attract some fish from a distance, you can see there. Wow. Beautiful, beautiful cloud going down through the water column. So nice big See, that shows how clear it is, Rob. Yeah. yeah. You see that from the photo? Yeah, perfectly, yeah. yeah. So nice big cloud, that's going to attract fish. Now, that's great attracting fish in your peg, but do you just want to attract them or do we want to catch them? We want to catch them. So what I would probably do at that point, after I felt like I've attracted some fish, I'll probably switch to a different area of my bowl where the ground mate's not as wet. And here, I mean, look, if I get a ball of that, I can put that in my feeder and it goes to the bottom in one rock hard lump. I'll chuck that in, look, Lee, you won't yeah. see anything. Plop. makes a yeah, totally different mate. noise. Yeah. It goes to the bottom in one rock hard lump. Then you imagine my feeder going to the bottom, encasing all my ground bait in the feed, in the feeder, all my feed in that feeder, and then my hook bait is laying at the side. Literally, there's no other option for the fish other than to eat my hook bait. Because all the bait is in the feeder, the only, the only other bait is my hook bait. So that's when you create that rock hard ball of ground bait in your feeder. That, that bait delivery system, a window feeder, is perfect for doing that. That's when you'd use that situation. So, a lot of people struggle with a window feeder. They first feel that they need to fill it with particles all the time. Quite often, 
I don't know about you, Lee, but I'm using just neat ground bait with window feed. Yeah, right. more great. and more very, now. Very powerful. Using the ground bait as an attractor rather than piling particles in there. And the other thing I'd say, and this is a question we've had today, the feeder doesn't dictate the distance you're fishing. The feeder is all about delivering the bait. I've got some different feeders here on my, on my tray. I've got rocket feeders, which are great if I want to put in that sloppy ground bait because they've got the bottom weight. It just stops the sloppy ground bait coming out and hitting you on the back of the head when you cast. And I will use these bottom weight feeders, these window 